with the professional VMware.com, V Brown Bag. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking to Mr. Chris Boyd. He is at Virtual Boyd on Twitter. He's going to be talking about desktop as a service. A few things before we get going here. I wanted to let you guys know, uh, guys and girls rather, um, I want to let everyone know that we have a Cisco certification track that is starting on May the 14th, and it's going to cover uh, CCNA, CCNP, uh, routing and switching, uh, and data center, I believe. So that's a that's a pretty long track that that we've got set up with uh, with uh, folks like Chris Wall uh, within the virtualization community, and other folks uh, with CCIE certifications and CCNA, etc. So. I'm really excited about it. It's a little bit of a um, change of pace from what we have done in the past, but I think that the Cisco track is going to be very helpful to those of us uh, who are involved with networking within virtualization environment. So I'm really excited about it. Other shows that we've got coming up uh, next week, April 30th, we've got Chris Colati uh, with the Cloud Hybrid Service. And then the week after, Chris is going to be on the show again with uh, vCloud Hybrid Service for Disaster Recovery. Uh, we've got our, our full show schedule posted at professionalvmware.com. Uh, and uh, as always, feel free to participate in uh, this evening's podcast through hashtag vbrownbag. Uh, any one of the, well, actually probably <laughs> probably the uh, U.S. Twitter account, because that's the one I'm in right now. It's, it's at vbrownbag. Other Twitter accounts that we have across uh, the globe are V Brown Bag Latam, V Brown Bag EMEA, and the newly formed V Brown Bag Junior. Uh, again, my name is Damian Carlson. I'm at Six Foot Dad, and the presenter this evening is Chris Boyd at Virtual Boyd. And Chris, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself while I turn presenter rights over to you? Okay. So the name is Chris Boyd. Um, I work for VMware. I'm actually the senior product manager for our EUC solutions. What that really means is that um, we have our solution stacks, which we actually try to build um, holistic solutions to be able to uh, provide kind of an end-to-end -end production ready for end-user computing. Uh, usually we focus on specific verticals. We attack things like healthcare, financial, education, federal, uh, but we also try to incorporate a lot of our partner technology. So I get the, the joy of not only working with the entire EUC portfolio of products, but I also work a lot with our partners. So I do a lot of the VMUGs, the VMWs, partner exchanges. Um, actually just came out of a VMUG today, um, working with you know all kinds of different partners like Nixenta, Atlantis, F5, um, and, and even, as, as some might say, is the evil word around here is Citrix. Um, just because, you know, obviously they're a big competitor of ours, but there's, a little, there's integration too within um, some of our product sets as well. So uh, my background uh, is actually an engineer by trade. Um, I was an enterprise architect for years as a VMware customer, uh, but I got hired by VMware a little over six years ago, originally as a consultant, field consultant. Um, I've only ever done EUC, mostly because they found out I knew uh, enough about Active Directory and Citrix, so they figured, well, I should be a desktop guy. Back in the days when VMware was just um, ESX and vCenter, anybody that knew anything about Active Directory basically got pushed into the desktop side. So, um, so now we do all kinds of stuff like desktop as a service. Obviously, the desktop as a service piece is based on the acquisition that we have. We purchased a company called Desktone, for those that don't know. Um, Desktone's model originally was as a platform provider. So they weren't a service provider. They did not actually sell you uh, desktops as a service. What they did is they built a broker uh, that they then sold to the service providers. And the service providers, uh, and we have a whole list, and I actually have a slide in here that shows a bunch of them uh, were the ones that were actually selling the desktops. So we announced last October, actually, when we were at uh, VMworld Europe, uh, that we had acquired Desktop. We brought them into the family, and one of the first things we did, which was announced last month is we offer now desktop as a service on our vCloud hybrid service platform. Um, so he was talking about Chris Pilate, which is actually one of my best friends. He and I started at VMware together. Um, so he's one of the vCloud hybrid services tech marketing guys. He knows DR. And so we get to work together quite a bit, both on the EUC and then the cloud service side. So um, I've got hopefully a, a good technical deck here uh, for everybody. Uh, I'm going to cover, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, we build the business case, but 
we can kind of dive a little bit into the technical pieces that go into it, what the architecture looks like, um, and hopefully there's going to be uh, a lot of questions. I want to try and facilitate as much discussion as possible because desktop as a service in general is still relatively new. Uh, the concept isn't new, it's just the delivery really hasn't been as big as it has until recently. And we're still trying to understand kind of where everybody wants to take desktop as a service and, and where are the places that make sense and what pieces um, from the technical side that may be missing um, or that we, you know, hit spot on. So, so anyway, so I'll jump right into it. Um, so desktop as a service from VMware, and hopefully everybody can see my screen okay. Uh, if not, just go ahead and stop me anytime you want. Um, so we have, if you can see it in the middle, it says VMware Horizon DAS Powered. So then we have VMware Cloud, that's our um, offering with cloud hybrid services, but there's also the cloud provider, which is your um, our partner providers, um, all kinds of service providers that are out there. And, and I even have a, a map that shows a lot of the data center locations. And then you can also do it as a private cloud. So you can actually run Horizon DAS on your internal uh, vCloud director instance. Um, the nice thing is if you do a hybrid cloud model, you can actually move desktops from between your private cloud out to VMware's cloud. So you can use it as a uh, on-demand uh, resources as needed. Uh, the other advantage there is you can you can take existing images and you can deploy those out to the, the Horizon DAS on ECHS. So uh, most of our requirements, you know, everything's listed here. We have all kinds of stuff that um, all kinds of requirements that we were trying to gather from customers, from partners that that we wanted to build into the platform. But the main pieces start with like your tiered role separation. So this is our uh, multi-tenancy piece, and it's the desktop broker originally, that was really the key item there because if you have Horizon View today, you don't have that multi-tenancy. You can't create separate organizations. Everything's kind of open to everybody. So being able to create separate sets of resources and assign those based on a usage model, that's really the, the kind of secret sauce of what desktop brought to the, to the DAS model. So then we have the user experience. The beauty of it is, is even though it is a different broker than Horizon View, it uses the same client. So you get the same experience. So customers or users where they use Horizon View today, whether it's on the iPad, whether it's on the Mac, whether it's on a Windows desktop, thin client, the user experience looks and feels the same. So you actually get the same benefits as well. Um, enterprise integration, this is just basically you can put it all on your regular uh, vSphere stack, your vSetting, your ESX, and not have to actually deploy a whole bunch of you know new servers or or new software, and so if you have the cloud director, it just sits right on top of it. Uh, you get choice of device. Obviously, we, we support all kinds of devices between iOS, Android, of course, all the regular, um, you know, Mac laptops, full desktops, Windows. Uh, we have Linux-based clients, so all that allows customers kind of the, the choice to be able to use whatever they want to use. And then, of course, we have all the security that's built into the normal V's for ESX, but as well the the broker, and, and again, it's actually part of that uh, role separation. So these are our DAS offerings today. Again, we talked about the public cloud. This is the VMware offering today. Um, the beauty of it is, is you have no infrastructure to manage because you're paying for that. That's built into the service, but without the huge cost like you would get if you went to VCHS and said, I want to buy some capacity and roll desktops out there. Instead, you're paying on a per desktop basis, and the cost per desktop is much lower. Uh, there's no upfront cost. There's no, you know, uh, there's no membership cost that you have to pay. There's no $500 or $1,000 or anything to set up an account. It's literally you're just paying per desktop per month. And it's scalable on demand. So you can scale up, you can scale down on a month-to-month -month basis. And it's really minimal expertise because you don't have to uh, know a whole lot about the infrastructure because we're managing that site for you. If you go with one of our Horizon DAS powered service providers, you get a lot of the same stuff. You get, you know, again, you don't have to manage the infrastructure because, again, it's as a service. But you also get additional things like um, help desk uh, services. Now, when we say help desk, we're not necessarily talking about uh, help desk for IT folks. We're talking about help desk for users. So VMware today, we don't actually add that as a service. That's not really our model. Uh, we may be going to that in the future. We're just not there yet. But a lot of these service providers, and you see some of them below with Dell and Fujitsu, NEC, they offer this stuff today because they've been doing it a little bit longer than we have. But they also have stuff around. Um, additional management tools, security, backups, all that stuff. And we're going to have some of that as we go on. Um, I know Damien mentioned BCHS with disaster recovery. And that's something that, that Chris Kalani has been talking quite a bit about. Um, they actually had a session about it today at the VMUG. Uh, 
um, because it was just announced, but we're eventually going to get that in the Horizon Dazz offering as well. We just don't have that today, mostly because a lot um, there's a cost associated with it, and we're still trying to keep a model where the cost per desktop is still pretty low, it makes it more attractive and, and more uh, reasonable. So then there's the private cloud side. This is where uh, you would actually manage your own infrastructure, but you're using the Horizon DAS broker. Um, you buy your own compute, your own storage, your own network, but you get uh, the flexibility for your own desktop options, and now you can build your own multi-tenancy, your own desktop as a service. And if you have things like chargeback built in, uh, you can utilize that. You can actually charge your own departments the same as you know if you were purchasing it from a service provider. Uh, the IT ex expertise obviously is going to be required because you're going to need things like vCloud Director, vSphere, ES, ESX, and you're going to have to know how to manage all that stuff. So then we have ours again on the vCloud hybrid service. So the advantage here is, is that customers uh, or your users can actually come from a remote office, they can come from a corporate office, they can come from you know, public, um, they can come from you know, anywhere on the internet because, they're, because it's a cloud-based service. But because that cloud-based service is tied back into your network, they're getting uh, access from the internet into the desktop, but the desktop itself is then giving them access into their into your organization. So having those connections across, and there's there's multiple different ways to do that. There's things like uh, IPsec tunneling, there's MPLS, there's uh, other different technologies, other, other different um, VPNs and, and firewall setups, and, and it's all the way VCHS does it today. So if you have VCHS, if you have, you know, vCloud hybrid service today, uh, the, the network setup is going to be exactly the same. But the advantage, again, your Active Directory, your networking, data center resources, those are all going to be available for those users. So it's not like a limited desktop where they just get Windows, they just get Office, they just get Adobe Reader, but they don't really have access to anything from the internet. So, so when we looked at when we wanted to provide Horizon DAS, and not just our own Horizon DAS, but also the platform itself, we said, okay, these are kind of the, the main things we want to focus on. We want to focus on the user experience. We want to focus on simplicity of the service so that for you folks, for your IT folks, uh, it becomes easy to manage. And that's really the key because you want a fixed cost, but you want it as a service where you're not going to have to worry about the overhead and the, the headaches of, of delivering that. That's why you're buying it as a service. But also keeping the cost low while still giving you all the security and control that you expect especially if you have any kind of regulatory compliance issues that you have to deal with. And then, of course, being able to deliver it in our hybrid cloud, but also you know, between your internal resources and our cloud resources or service-provided cloud resources as well. So let's go through the architecture just a little bit. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please don't hesitate to ask some questions. I've got the window open, so I can kind of keep an eye on that. Um, so this is our the architecture platform for Horizon DAS. So where we really start is if we kind of explain it from a tenant perspective. So imagine you have customer one, tenant one, you have your broker and then your view agent, which is going to your virtual desktops um, that belong to you but are managed by either the service provider or VMware. And within that desktop management, you, you can either have client managed, you can have service provider managed, or it can be a third party resource managed. And you manage the entitlements through what's called our Horizon DAS Resource Manager. Now, the one thing I will say about this, uh, this particular site, as you look at it and you see all these data centers across the world, those are for reference only. Those aren't actual specific data center locations. I have another slide that actually shows where the data centers are because there's a lot more than the uh, seven that you see on this slide. So the user goes into the broker to log in through the agent coming from whatever location and going to whatever data center. This part is a little bit key though and it depends on the applications that you're using because you want to be able to plan a scenario where the latency from the user to the desktop that they're going to isn't going to be too ridiculously high. And, and for anybody that's done VDI in general, if you've got offshore users and you have a data center in the US or you have a data center you know, in Australia with users in Europe, uh, the latency can actually wreak havoc, not just on the user experience, but the applications themselves. And they can have all kinds of issues, especially if they're connecting to data center resources, say a SQL server or an application tiered server. Um, so it's important to note that with the service providers that we work with and with our own VCHS, we're building out more and more data centers every day to be able to satisfy those types of requirements where you can keep users closer to where the data center is but still be able to provide services like VR. So if a data center goes away, you've got a second data center for users to connect to. So these are some of the challenges that we're trying to deal with 
uh, for, as a service provider. And some of the service providers uh, have been doing it a little bit longer, so they have more resources to work with. But we have um, already, I think, four uh, data centers, three across the U.S., and then we have one in the U.K., and we're building out more uh, every day, but we're just depending on the VCHS team. They're building them out pretty quick, and they're going to have a lot by the end of this year. So. Um, so the resource manager manages all your compute, your network, and storage, and there's all kinds of stuff built in, things like dedupe, um, and then all the security pieces that deal with uh, um, your Active Directory connections and being able to keep all the multi-tenancy so that uh, individual organizations or you as individual customers have your own separate area and you're not going to be affected by somebody else's security issues. Um, and it also manages both the compute and the network, so CPU, uh, network again with all that stuff is going to be optimized and the beauty of it is is that with when you're sending users across the WAN to connect to a desktop there's all kinds of issues around bandwidth but because you're using the view client you're using a broker that's purpose-built for this situation it does a really good job of optimizing that WAN connection and keeping the bandwidth as low as possible so these are the components that we have built in. So again, you see one tenant on the left and one tenant on the right. So there's an appliance that goes with that. Um, so the tenant appliance has the broker, it has your allocator in there that will actually assign those virtual desktops and whatever apps they have assigned. Um, the session manager will help manage, and that's one of the optimization pieces around uh, the bandwidth and everything else. And then we have the inventory manager, which ties directly into the centralized resource manager. So that tenant appliance actually exists in your environment. So if you assume that uh, you have a data center, say, in New York, but the resource manager is where VCHS is and it's in Las Vegas, then you go, okay, our tenant appliance is, is talking with the API of the resource manager that exists in that Vegas data center, but the tenant appliance, which just slaps right into, um, into vCenter, uh, is what sits in your environment. So your users are connecting directly to that and then the virtual desktops are, are connecting through that tenant appliance, but the resource manager tells you where to go, and it's the one that actually deploys all those desktops. And so when you look at things like the compute API, storage API, that's through that resource manager. So you see that separate environments are managed very uh, independently, even though the resource manager is aggregating all those data center resources that are needed. So this is the map I was talking about. So again, you see our DAS network. This is what's available today except for the blue ones. So the blue ones show our pipeline. This is where we're trying to go. And this isn't just the VMware pipeline. This is also part of our partner pipeline. So you can see a bunch of data centers in the U.S., a lot in Europe, um, several in uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, so anywhere from China, Japan, even in, uh, one in Australia and Peru out there. Uh, so the, the one I'll show you is actually part of our pipeline. That I believe that's one of our partners because that's not a VMO one that we're planning. But what you see today, the VCHS ones, we have the three in the United States. I believe the one in one is live. VCHS went live a few weeks ago in London, so the Horizon DAS version is usually just a few weeks behind that. But you can see a big list of partners underneath, um, things like Teletech, Foreshore, uh, Fujitsu. So these are a lot of our service providers that actually you can go to and you can get DAS today. But it gives you an idea of how quickly this is growing. So again, the pipeline ones that you see here, which is um, about a third of the data centers that are on this map, uh, are actually still going to be built in 2014. So that doesn't even count what's planned for 2015 as well. So let's talk about the end user experience, because this is really where the rubber meets the road, because we can provide all these services and we can build out these desktops, but if the experience isn't what a user is expecting or what is acceptable, it Adoption is going to be very difficult. And anybody that's done VDI in the past knows that the end user experience is really what drives um, successful projects. So, and, and I've done enough VDI projects over the last you know seven, eight, ten years, however long I've been doing this, um, to know that you know you can go and deploy, you can go and test, and you can show all the metrics in the world that say that a virtual desktop performs just as well as a physical desktop. But if the users don't adopt it, and if the users don't have the experience that they expect you're never going to be successful. So we made sure, and that's one of the nice things about this solution, is that you're using the Horizon View client, which is the same client that we've been using for years. It's been optimized. It uses PC over IP. It uses all the pieces that are tied into it. So again, we have all the flexible clients that go on all the different devices, tablets, laptops, Android, iOS, um, even the, the Linux-based desktops, and then thin clients and zero clients. So you can have those optimized clients 
uh, that are going, you know, you can use for VDI, you can also use for Horizon tabs. We also have the mobile clients, which give you the same experience, and we have things like the Unity touch piece, with it, which allows for a seamless native experience within the iPad, even though it's still a Windows desktop, um, it just gives a much, much better experience. Uh, so, BYOD initiatives, again, VMware is a big BYOD uh, shop. Uh, they did away with buying cell phones a while ago. They allowed people to bring their own iPads. And we actually have a lot of our own sales folks that have adopted uh, just using mobile devices. So a lot of them decided to band together, especially a lot of the more sales folks, a little bit less on the technical. But they decided to get together and they said, we want to do a 30-day challenge of can I work just for my iPad and not touch my laptop at all? And a lot of them actually have not even gone back to their laptop and it's been months now. The main difference is now they're just buying more accessories for the iPad. So, uh, But it enables you to use those iPads with still having that secure environment with that reduced TCO of the Horizon DAS, you know, desktop as a service. Uh, but it also allows the same flexibility because you can use all these different devices. So if they decide they want to go back to the laptop, if they want more screen real estate, if they want to get a thin client, and have a nice big, you know, 30-inch monitor, which is one we use for healthcare quite a bit. Uh, that's definitely one that that you know, allows for a different type of user experience depending on those requirements. So, uh, and again, we have web access as well. We'll talk about it more, but the idea is is that you can sit down at any machine, open a browser, and as long as it supports HTML5, you can get the full desktop experience to a Horizon DAS desktop without having to load any piece of software on that machine on that client. So it can even be a Chromebook, for example. You can use the browser there to actually connect to your virtual desktop without ever having to load anything on the Chromebook itself. So this is the browser access I was talking about. We call it our uh, BLAST protocol or our BLAST experience. Um, it allows you to connect directly through HTML5. Again, no client required, but you can still use the client if you want to. So we have a couple different ways, and if you look at the graphics here, it shows the user going through HTML5, but you can also go through what we call our Horizon Workspace client and use that as a single sign-on to actually launch either the native client that's installed or through the browser client itself. The difference is, is if you go through the browser you're using HTML5 to run that protocol, whereas if you're going through the full client, you're actually using PC of RFP. They're both really optimized, but the main advantage is, is that uh, the browser base doesn't require any kind of client install. So again, it's, it keeps the endpoint nice and secure. We actually use this one quite a bit on the, uh, the education side and for a lot of BYOD uh, type scenarios. So install free access, uh, but it still allows that full Windows desktop experience to all kinds of devices, like I said, like Google Chromebooks. So then we also have 3D. So again, you're getting Horizon DAS and you're still getting all this functionality that you would want out of you know, a full desktop experience. It's not the, uh, the GPU base. This is all software rendering. It actually works pretty well. We've demoed it at VMworld. We demoed it at uh, our partner exchange earlier this year with a lot of good feedback. We've done all kinds of things like Google Earth and, and uh, 3D imaging with some, some of our healthcare apps that we do. Uh, but it's really around the fact that you know, still buying it as a subscription service, but being able to get this full experience that you get that would cost you normally, you know, $1,000 or $1,500 desktop to be able to do the same thing. So the, the idea is that we support all the different uh, DirectX OpenGL apps. And so, um, again, you see the versions here, DirectX 9, OpenGL 2.1. So that's a little bit of a limitation, but um, you have Aero, you have 3D graphics, you have all that experience all built right into what exists today without having to pay extra for it. So then we also have the media services part. So if you know anything about the unified communications piece and the unified communications uh, software applications, things like the, the phones and whatnot, um, unified communications became part of Horizon View. So again, it's built into the client itself. So Horizon DAS gets it uh, by default. So we have you know, Cisco, Mitel, Avaya, Microsoft has theirs. It includes all the stuff around you know, USB multimedia re redirection, but also gives you that location-based printing. We've also called that the follow me desktop as well. Um, it just allows, again, more use cases without having to pay more for each individual desktop. Uh, and if you have your, your VoIP that you've already paid for, you can extend that out to your DAS one. Because again, you're going to take an existing image and you can deploy that out to your Horizon DAS, whether it's on-premise, whether it's off-premise, whether it's VMware, whether it's a service provider, uh, and still deliver that traditional desktop experience without having to buy 
you know, those big desktop uh, computers. So then we also have the mobile client experience. I talked a little bit about the Unity Touch. Uh, you can kind of see it in this graphics. There's a little button there in the middle. Uh, if you're on an iPad, and I don't know if everybody here has used uh, the Horizon View client, but if you're on there and you've got that button, once you hit that button, uh, it pops up six other buttons. Things come out there like a full keyboard, uh, a mouse pad. Um, there's a couple other, uh, there's a settings button, but it allows for kind of a more native experience, even though you're still going to a Windows desktop through an iPad, but it's much more usable these days. Again, I talked about um, our sales force, you know, the guys that are going out there, and they're now working just from the iPad. This has been kind of a key item for them because uh, they can't get everything they need native on the iPad, so they still have to go to a Windows desktop, and because that experience is so seamless, it's, what, it's what's made it so successful. So easier to launch apps, easier to switch between running apps, you're finding your files, um, and again, it's a seamless experience. And so when we talk about uh, successful projects and, and giving your users an environment that they can be comfortable with, that they can still feel productive with, this is one of the ways that we do that. And so we bring Windows apps to that mobile device in a way that's going to keep users productive all the time. So now we have our simple virtual desktops. So again, we talk about how we're going to manage them. We look at things like what's the software that's running with them, what's the facilities that you have to manage, what's the hardware, what's the support. If you're going to a DAS model, all that's going to be provided, whether it's by VMware, whether it's by one of our service providers. It's all about you know desktop as a service so that you're just you know writing a check every month for those desktops, but it's, it's still affordable. So the management, the devices, the apps, the OS, uh, you can either bring that yourself or you can go to a solution provider to get that. So it, it just gives you options. That's the main thing that we want to be able to do because we understand that while desktop as a service uh, means one thing, customers are going to use it very differently depending on what their business case looks like. So whether you want to manage it yourself, whether you want you know everything managed by us, whether you want it managed by a service provider, uh, we don't mind uh, as long as uh, you're using our platform. That's all we care about. The getting started part is really easy. We talk about uh, three clicks to a virtual desktop. Now there is a little caveat there, uh, assuming you already have the image in place. So if you have your own image that you're going to want to use, when you first stand everything up, you're actually going to want to migrate that image over to uh, either VCHS or whoever your service provider is. But once that's over there, actually setting up desktops is three clicks to actually get it up and running. And then once the users are assigned, which is really just two or three steps, uh, the users can then go log in, they put in an IP address or they put in uh, whatever PIP you have out there, and then they're off and running and they're connected to a desktop. And it's, it's really seamless. We try and keep the management really easy, and that's really the key to the whole solution, is that you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time trying to configure pools and trying to do this and trying to you know, assign users and attach to an Active Directory. All that stuff is done up front and done one time. And not doing it on a pool by pool basis, but you have a nice, easy interface, a nice little wizard to be able to walk you through setting up your virtual desktops, assigning your users, and then the users uh, have that seamless experience that looks the same if they've been doing virtual desktops and they've been working with few clients, it'll look exactly the same. So I'm kind of flying through here. I know we're uh, about at the top of the hour, so I think we've got about 30 minutes left. I think I'm about halfway through this deck. Are there any questions? I haven't heard anything from anybody. I assume everybody's been muted. Uh, but I wanted to kind of just at least stop, you know, breathe for a second, and see if uh, anybody had any lingering questions over the first half of the deck. Sure. So, yeah, we do keep everybody muted um, only because, uh, you know, otherwise there would be a lot of, of unexpected background noise. Yeah. Uh, however, if anyone has a question and would like to be unmuted, just raise your hand or shoot me a note within the webinar. You can also uh, tweet hashtag vbrownbag or at vbrownbag with any questions, and I'll, I will uh, work them in uh, throughout Chris's presentation. Okay. So for now, I'll keep rolling. If anything comes in, don't hesitate to stop me. All right. So one of the main things when we're offering Horizon DAS as a, as a service, as desktops as a service, it's really around still being able to give that enterprise-grade uh, service that you're used to, whether it comes from the infrastructure, whether it comes from the software itself. And so when we offer it, we have a managed infrastructure that we've been using, again, VCHS that's proven, the vCloud director that's proven, um, and then you know the infrastructure that we build out, multiple data centers, and it's tested, and it's uh, 
uh, you know, it's it's supported by you know our regular support, our GSS supports. So you have a phone number to call. Uh, we get enterprise grade SLAs, things like you know 99.9% .9 uptime. Uh, what we like to call best in class support or has been identified from some of our partners as best in class support. And so the idea is it's something that we've done. Um, we haven't been doing it for 15 years. I don't think anybody's been doing DAS for 15 years, but uh, we know our platform, we know the infrastructure, we know the hardware, we know the management tools that go with it, and we have the ability to make the service predictable. So, so again, predictable cost is where we're going. So there's no upfront capital. This is really a big piece, and I know I, I mentioned it before, but um, you know, we as VMware for our Horizon DAS offering. Uh, we actually aim for, for larger chunks. We say nothing less than 50 desktops. So our offering starts at 50 desktops and goes up from there. So we see no upfront cost because all you're paying for is this sub subscription model. There's a dollar amount attached to each desktop. We have two levels of desktops, and we'll talk about that more when I get to that point. We'll give you those dollar figures out there. Uh, but there's no other cost associated. There's no management cost. There's no monthly subscription rate outside of the per desktop cost. And so that's the main thing because it's predictable. So minimal internal labor and expertise. If you're buying the service, if you're doing it as a hosted service, there's not much you have to do other than connecting your environment up to these virtual desktops. You don't have to build images if you don't want to because you can actually use um, our CAN provided images that have you know things like Office apps on there and Adobe Reader and all the browsers and the Windows-based applications. Uh, so you don't have to have that in there. You don't have to be... Um, a huge vCloud expert because we can actually manage all that for you and we'll even assist with getting the environment connected together with your Active Directory and getting uh, the users logged in as well. So, And because it's an OpEx model based on utility pricing, again, there's no CapEx, it's all subscription based and so you're just paying, you just write a check every month and if you decide to be using too many desktops and you take some desktops off there, bring your costs down. Um, if you decide that you need more desktops, that's easy to change on a month-to-month -month basis. You pick up the phone, you call us, hey, I need more desktops, very easy to do. And the service providers are the same way. So this gives you an idea of some of the numbers. Again, hopefully nobody's going to hold me to every single one of these dollar amounts, but there are a lot of folks that have done a lot of work around the cost analysis piece. We have whole teams that have been dedicated to this. We're still trying to update this. We're still trying to do more analysis because this is really the key uh, to the whole thing. And when we talk about Horizon View, we talk about virtual desktops, we talk about desktop as a service, at the end of the day, it's always going to come down to cost. So we talk about our traditional VDI operational cost, and you see the hardware number in there is $286. So that's the first vertical. So that's your server, storage, network switches. This is really an optimized dollar amount because um, over the years, a lot of the um, storage solutions for virtual desktops have really gone they brought the price down. I mean, I remember three, four years ago where we went to a lot of customers and we talked about where their costs were going. And these are, again, upfront costs. This is not a subscription model, but the server or the storage cost alone could be three, four $400 per desktop. So this is everything. This is your compute. This is your networking. This is storage. Um, and then, of course, you have the labor part, which for virtual desktops is almost as big uh, as everything else, which includes the software licensing and that uh, the server storage piece. So bringing your total about 840 bucks. So when you look at VMware DAS, again, the labor cost is going to be, this is as cheap as you're going to get. And this is really around more uh, help desk costs, a little bit of security, not much desktop management. Again, you don't have to bring your own image, but you can if you want to. There's some administration over costs. It's going to be more about the help desk piece. And then you have the subscription cost, which is the main piece of what VMware DAS is. So this is based on uh, the lower end model, and this can actually be, um, because you're paying per month, this isn't considered an upfront cost. I mean, all of these are considered, you know, OPEX expenses. Uh, and then your hardware piece is about 100 bucks, and then the software piece, which you do have to bring your own Windows license if you're doing the desktop OS, and that's the main difference. And I know we haven't really talked about that yet, but we give the offering for Horizon Dads. You can actually do a desktop OS of Windows 7, Windows 8, or you can do the server base with Windows Server 2000 or 2012. The difference is, is the desktop OS models you have to bring your own license. The server OS models you don't, but you are sharing that server OS with other users. You can have it dedicated to your environment where you say, okay, I have 100 users, I want them to share uh, this server OS, and I don't want to share it with anybody else. That's fine, that's easy to do. 
So then when we look at things like costs, like for a physical laptop, again, you see the labor costs involved are pretty high. The um, hardware side, this is more around the virtual desktop as well. Uh, but again, you're still paying that uh, same $40 license cost uh, because you're connecting into a virtual desktop. But the labor around the management of that laptop is really your key piece. And then the physical desktop is going to be the same thing. So uh, it just kind of gives you an idea of how much can be saved uh, when you go the, uh, the Verizon Azure Desktop as a Service model. And most of it's going to be in the labor. It's really just around the fact that they're easier to manage because it's a service. So when we look at all the components that go into what Horizon does is we look at the infrastructure. So you've got stuff like firewalls, VPNs. You have a public IP address. This is the one that your users are actually connecting to. You have all the DHCP and NATing that has to be built in. You have your disk I.O., redundancy HA, uh, and then they give you two different 30 gig uh, images that you can bring in. Obviously, you can purchase more depending on how many virtual desktops you're buying. Then when you look at the virtual desktop itself, there's the uh, the Microsoft uh, license for the workstation for desktops. There's the Horizon View client that you need. And then we also have the HTML5 access. And then, of course, all the support stuff that comes with it. And that 99.9% .9 SLA, that is in any contract that you sign as far as BCHS. The individual service providers may have a different SLA, but that's usually the one that we try and stress uh, is what customers are looking for. Anything more than that, obviously, there's going to be a cost associated with that because with the desktop of the service, to keep it predictable, to say, well, we only have two levels of cost, um, we have to have everything well-defined. So that 99.9% .9 is the easiest way to do that. So now we talk about security and control. And this is um, kind of the secret sauce of VCHS as well. Uh, but it's also the broker piece. So we talked about how you have this tenant uh, virtual appliance that exists in your environment, this is a lot of what comes with that tenant appliance. So you have your single point of control for your desktop management, your entitlements, and all your provisioning that you can do. So you have one place to go. You can see in the graphic there you have dashboard, mapping, pool management, and configuration all in one location. Uh, and then you have your secure communications, which are between your IT data center and the VMware cloud or the service provider cloud. Seamless connectivity with your on-premise Active Directory. This is all around, um, again, once it's set up, the, uh, it's all predictable. It all works the way your existing environment works. You have virtual desktops today. We do have two-factor authentication. Um, we have radio support, uh, RSA. Um, I think there are others, but those are the ones I know off the top of my head. I kind of wish those were in there, actually. Um, then we have our dedicated compute options if you want to be able to uh, identify. So again, that's the desktop OS versus the server OS piece. So you have an option there depending on what license model and what uh, individual virtual hardware model you want to go with. So then you have your enterprise integration piece. So here you see things like VPN or MPLS. These are just two of your options. Um, the VPN is, is the way most folks go, but again, MPLS, uh, having a dedicated pipe there uh, is not a bad way to go as well. It, it just comes down to what kind of security model you want to go with. So you see Horizon Dads sitting on top of the vCloud hybrid service and how we connect back to your enterprise IT resources, which gives you full access and full extension of your data center resources. So anybody logging into those uh, Horizon desktops, those desktop as a service, will get all the normal data center resources. So if it's shared drives, or it's Active Directory, if it's uh, it's enterprise applications, they would have access to all that stuff. And because you're bringing in your own image, all the applications should act exactly the same way. If you have persona management built in, that will be available as well. So anything in your data center today will be available to those Horizon desktops as well. So we have our comprehensive security piece. And this is really just explaining that individual users can have individual virtual hardware. So whether it's um, dedicating the hypervisor, dedicating the virtual network, the access gateways, your management database, that's for your one environment. And then if it's a secondary customer, or even if you need to have a secondary instance within your own organization for security reasons, you can do that as well. But the point is, is that you have your own environment that is not going to be affected by anybody else. It's completely isolated, obviously, with all the virtual tools that are built in the vCloud director today. And that's what we really take advantage of, because everything's going to be built on ESX, a 
proven platform for the enterprise. You know, customers across the world, we have what, 600,000 uh, vSphere, ESX, vCenter customers. We have, um, I want to say, 30, 40,000 vCloud director customers. So this isn't something that is relatively new. It's something that's being used across enterprises all over the world. So then we look at our enterprise center. So again, this is the interface that you would actually manage everything from. So you have your user dashboard, which gives you things like your user count, uh, what are your static desktops, what are your total active sessions currently. You can look at your last 30 days of desktop usage, whether it's static, whether it's dynamic. You can look at individual data centers. So if you have desktops and multiple data centers, you'll see all that laid out. And then you'll also see your pools in the bottom left-hand corner as well. So it's really giving you a good holistic shot of your environment around the users and the desktops and the data centers all put together. Then when you go to the mapping uh, link there, you can do a user search, you can do manual user mapping, you can do AD group mapping. Uh, it's really as granular as you want to get, just like it is with Verizon View today. So there's, there is some synergy as far as the, uh, the way the environment is set up and the management capabilities and how granular you can get with uh, user mapping, things like that but it is a whole different uh, tool to use. The good thing is because everything's based on vSphere and uh, vCenter and ESX, all of the virtual hardware stuff is going to be the same. So again, that's why you can bring your own images. Then you have the pool management page, which this is pretty straightforward. You do all your pool management from there, your pool provisioning, your pattern management. So there's some uh, that's uh, usage information as well as configuration stuff. And then you have your configuration page connecting to your specific domain, uh, what's your service summary look like, and if you want to do things like two-factor authentication, those are going to be on there as well. So again, it's one pane. So if you have you know, identified administrators for your Verizon DAS environment, this is the one place they would go to. It's very simple to use, very intuitive. So let me talk about what it takes to actually manage those desktop images. Again, you're going to have VDI optimized images that are available from VMware or from the service provider, which you can use those, or you can create your own images. Ideally, those are going to be optimized as well. Uh, it's really up to you, so you have the option. If you start using your image and you decide that it's not optimized well enough, they're not giving the right, uh, the right uh, user experience, you can actually go switch to the VMware provided uh, at any time that you want. So you can blow away your pool, you can redeploy anytime you want. Uh, and it's really easy to do. It actually doesn't take very long because, again, all the data center resources are there to be able to help with that. So you can convert any existing desktop. So if you stand up a bunch of desktops and one of them uh, needs to change, you want to deploy a new application, you don't have to re-upload that entire image. You can actually use one of the existing desktops in the environment as your gold image. So again, that saves you if you've got desktop images that are you know, 30 gig, you don't want to always have to upload 30 gig worth of data every time you need to make a change. You can do it from within one of those desktops and then recertify that as gold and use that for your pool. So you can assign patterns to pools and you can take those images and you can back them up as well. All within Enterprise Center. And then you have your managing desktop pools. So you'll see you now at the pool management page in the Enterprise Center itself. Uh, you can create your pools so you see all the, the different selections. There's only you know six, seven selections here. So again, it's ease of management. You don't have, you know, like you go into Horizon View and if you want to go and create a pool, you've got about uh, 40, 50 different selections you have to make within the wizard to get that thing built up. This is going to be much simpler. You have limited selections, things like what's your desktop model, what's your protocol, what's your goal pattern. Um, there's only four that are required, so other than picking the data center. So then you just select the pool size that you want to do, and you can uh, you're off and running with your machine. So you can select again. I talked about the desktop OS or the server OS. That's the difference between VDI or RDS. So if you see RDS, you see RDSH, uh, you see hosted desktops. That's the stuff that's going to be on your Windows Server 2008, Server 2012. So you can select persistent or not. You can select the size that you want to go with. You select the protocol and your direct, act, uh, direct application also. So then we have the pool provisioning. Um, this is where you do all your um, 
more of the data center connection stuff, things like your Active Directory, where you want it to go, what domain you want it to join, if you want specific user groups assigned, if you want the computer naming. So the same thing you would do with Horizon View today around naming conventions you can do through here. And these are your more advanced attributes that you can set through cool customization as well. So uh, you don't necessarily spend a lot of time in here uh, if you don't need to, um, but it's all part of provisioning the pool itself, but a lot of the stuff can be set. And then, you know, on this page, it can actually accept the defaults, and the only thing you really have to put in there is the is the naming rule for your desktops. So then we talk about uh, hybrid cloud flexibility, and this is really the reason that we well, it's not the main reason that we had purchased Desktone, but it's one of the visions that we saw as we were purchasing Desktone was really okay. They make the platform that's very successful, and we're just deploying into VCHS. So. When we look at it from, we're the EUC business unit, that's the business unit I work for. We're actually a customer of VCHS. We're purchasing um, the capacity from them to then turn it around and put desktops on it to provide to you folks. So we have it as, this is a great platform to use. This is a very proven platform, a uh, very successful platform. So we look at you know us as the service provider or our customers as a service provider, but it's all based on the cloud director and so the Horizon DAS broker using vCloud Director and being able to optimize uh, not just the experience for the users and, and optimize you know, CPU and memory, but also just to be able to save the cost that we can provide the desktops at this lower cost that we keep talking about that I still haven't told you this one. And the main thing is, is, is get the flexibility, even though there are only two different levels of Horizon uh, DAV. So there's you know, single CPU versus two CPU, and, and I'll show you those. I think it's actually the slide after this. Uh, but the idea is with things like the soft uh, 3D built in, with all the stuff going back to your data center, you have the ability to satisfy a lot of different use cases. So some of the ones we talked about earlier was UIOD. Contract employees is a big one. Um, this is especially important in the federal space. We have a lot of federal customers coming to us. Um, they say, well, we have a lot of contract people. Maybe they're on short-term, long-term contracts, three months, 12 months. You can buy whatever you want only for a certain set of months. It connects them back to your data center to get those resources that they need. And it helps you be able to limit their access as well. It becomes much more granular at that level because they're kind of outside your data center so you can limit what services actually come across. Branch office desktop is a big one. If um, We've actually had some banks where they've purchased a smaller bank and they only have a, a handful of branches. They want to be able to give those users quick access back to their data center. They say, okay, I want to buy one branch, give that branch, give that uh, those desktops as a service, give them access into our data center, and they can stand those up very quickly, and then they can go through the process of migrating those users over into their environment while still giving them access their environment as it's needed for day one processing. Uh, and then as they don't need them anymore, they spin those desktops down and they, you know, because it's on a month-to-month -month basis, they just stop paying for the service. Um, seasonality, we've had a couple customers recently came to us and said, um, we have our busy season is March and April. I assume it's something tax-based, uh, but I don't know for sure. But they say every March and April we need an additional 5,000 desktops. And we say, okay, so for two months they pay for 5,000 desktops and the rest of the year they pay for nothing. Uh, so seasonal around the holidays is another big one. Obviously, retail is big in that area. Education is actually uh, seasonal in certain testing periods of the year, so they'll buy them for two or three months at a time towards the end of the school year. So there's a lot of different use cases that fall into that seasonality. So these are the two offerings. Um, so we have everything detailed here. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, the service guarantee for the standard is you get one virtual CPU, 2 gig of RAM, the hard disk is limited to 30 gig, and the IOPS that are guaranteed per desktop are 20. So that's you know input output operations per second. Um, the soft 3D is not available in that standard. Obviously, it's going to use more um, more CPU, so you're going to need the advanced version. But your access is your normal view clients, the browser. You use PC over IP or that HTML5 uh, access. You can do persistent or non-persistent. And again, then the available OSs, even though it's not technically supported by Microsoft, XP, 7, 8, we do uh, X, 64-bit, uh, and then, of course, uh, Server 2008, which R2 is required, or 2012. So it gives you an idea of some of the target users in here, things like knowledge workers, then internet browsing, minimal multimedia. If you want more, if you want 3D, you go with the advanced. So the standard is $35 per desktop per month. 
for VMware Horizon DAS, this is our VCHS based offering, uh, you'll see at the very bottom in very, very fine print, it says minimum 50 user increments. So we sell it in chunks of 50. The reason we do that is because that's how VCHS is selling the capacity, which is purchasing it from it like that. If you need it more granular, if you need smaller sets of users, uh, then we'll point you to one of our service providers. And up until March 10th, when we actually have VMware Horizon DAS as a service offering from VMware, if you went to VMware.com, you went to look up Horizon DAS, once you clicked on it, it will actually send you to a page that shows you all the links to all of our service provider partners. Um, so the advanced is $50 per desktop per month, 2 vCPU, 4 gig RAM, same disk size, double the IOPS, 3D is available, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, but that's going to be more for your power users. Uh, when you evaluate which model you want to go with, a lot of it's going to come down to what do your applications look like. And I'm not just talking about 3D, but there are a lot of applications that may seem like innocuous, they may seem low resource intensive, but it's worth evaluating just to make sure because you don't want to get into a scenario where you're purchasing the standard desktop model and you need to move to the advanced. The good news is is because you have your image that you're bringing yourself, you can actually switch between the two depending on what you're trying to do. So um, that change isn't a big change, but there is, you know, obviously some work involved there. So you do the best you can to really evaluate what your user needs are today before you go and purchase just so you know what you're getting into. And it's really going to be around those applications. So you look at the application set, you look at the most resource intensive applications, how the users use it, and make sure that you know, if you're going to go with standard, that one CPU, two gig RAM is going to be enough for them. I believe that is the end of the deck. Yep, that's the end of the deck. So um, that's pretty much everything I have for Horizon DAS. I mean, we can talk about uh, some locations. We can talk about some more use cases. If you guys have any uh, general questions, we only left about uh, seven minutes. So, um, but uh, I'll keep it open. I mean, and I'll hang around if anybody has any additional questions if we keep going. So, yeah, absolutely. Jamie, I don't know if you've got any questions yet. Um, Kel and Dan just noted on Twitter that uh, the the Horizon DAS desktops are sized the same as their current solution, so migration is rather seamless, which is kind of cool. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, or and that's kind of what we went for. Yeah, that's kind of the, the sizing around those does the Horizon DAS offering is really, you know, we looked at what customers were deploying today, not just as DAS offerings, but in all VDI deployments, and tried to keep it relatively standard. Again, you know, you want to get granular from the standpoint of we want to be able to satisfy every use case, but to be able to provide that lower cost, we say, okay, we can go with two different subscription models. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, Amazon also has two levels of subscription as well. The prices are very similar, if not exactly the same. Uh, and the configuration, the virtual configuration is relatively the same. The main difference that you're going to get there, and, and I don't do too much competition stuff because I don't want to say that there's anything wrong with Amazon's offering. Because to be honest, I think it was great that they announced it when they did because they really validated the marketplace for what DAS is and how many customers are looking at it. And the fact that they're already you know, live with their offering as well just shows that there's competition in the marketplace. And competition is only going to make us both better. Uh, so, the, but the main difference is is that with ours, you can actually bring your own images. That's the main issue. So, if you have all your applications and everything installed, you don't have to go in and set up a new image like you would have to in there. Very interesting. Uh, Joe Clark has a question, and that question is: How does DAS protect against the failure of an entire hosted data center when using a persistent full desktop model? Because it's on VCHS um, today, all that stuff, you can actually back up the images, you can do persona management. DR with desktops is always a, a very difficult use case because as we started moving all these desktops in data centers, whether it was in a DAS model, whether it was in a traditional on-premise model, we said, okay, now we can get our arms around it, we can manage it, but now you've centralized all these resources and you know, to that point, you lose a data center, that's a lot of user resources. And so the best thing to do with a DAS model because it's based on a central image is because we can do non-persistent, we can do persistent. So you can have persona management tools because it's still connecting back to your regular data center. So if you have a persona management tool, then 
what you have is that user persona and all you have to back up and all you have to protect is that user persona because if anything happens to the VCHS data center, you still have that base image because you can back that up. You can move it to another VCHS data center, data center. you can be up and running as long as you have that persona management keeps. And again, if you are only protecting that persona management, you can replicate that, you can back that up, you can do whatever you need to do. Uh, we actually have an architecture called Always On Point of Care, which we built for healthcare. But we're talking about possibly having customers use that in a DAS type scenario where they're backing up that user persona piece, and that's how they provide DR at a much lower cost than, say, doing a full persistence type backup where you go, okay, I got to take a full desktop or I'm trying to do you know, changes on just those desktop, things like that. So the user persona separation is really the key to, to getting to that DR piece. Uh, Joe, I hope that answered your question. Uh, I hope so too. That, <laughs> yeah. That is uh, all the questions that I'm seeing right now. Uh, does anyone else uh, have any questions about uh, you know, questions regarding something that they're looking into around as uh, general approaches, anything else along those lines? Uh, speak now. <laughs> now. Uh, you can tweet at vbrownbag or the vbrownbag hashtag or raise your hand or shoot me a question within the webinar. Let's see, here we have one. All right, Joe, I, I see that you have a question. Would you like me to unmute you? All right, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you now, Joe. Give me one second. All right, you're unmuted. Joe, are you there? Hey there, Chris. Um, my question was just around the locality of services as it relates to DAS. You know, I see it being a terrific opera, you know, operation as it pairs with BCHS and was wondering, um, does it really have a use case besides when you're looking at a global desktop strategy for a customer that has their own on-premises data center and wants to move to DAS? I mean, with virtual desktop being oftentimes used as a third tier, you know, the, the benefit of having the desktop close to the application services is obviously a core value, right? So do you see it really being a model where the entire data center moves to VCHS and that sort of being the direction of it? Or how do you view the, the future of the migration in, into that environment? For, for environments where you already have a lot of EDI, the, when you start doing a cost analysis of what it actually costs for your monthly subscription, obviously the OPEX is going to be a little bit more, but without that upfront cost, that's where you save. And, and because a lot of customers that we're dealing with, their concern is that short-term capital expenditure, we're helping them avoid that. But we're, you know, kind of the, the scenario you're talking about, I don't necessarily see like forklift environments where they say everything's going to go over to VCHS. But it definitely uh, opens the door for things like a DR model. We go, okay, we have you know, a handful of images. Let's go ahead and purchase a handful of, of uh, DAS desktops, move those images out there, and then in the DR scenario, we can spin up you know, 1,000 or 2,000 as we need because the VCHS capacity is there. Um, it, it's, this, is, this is part of where we're trying to kind of explore where everything's going. And because it's relatively new, it's hard to know where all the business cases are going to come from. I mean, like I talked about, education is one where they're asking for more of that hybrid model because they want to be able to move them seamlessly. The problem is, is education never got big in the vCloud Director piece. And because Horizon DAS is based on vCloud Director, um, they don't have that seamless integration between the two. But eventually we will have integration you know, between Horizon DAS and Horizon View. And I think that's where the model will start to change because then the moving between the two becomes much easier. And so you can grow, you can shrink, you can uh, completely vacate you know, your infrastructure, move everything out to the cloud. Again, the management side is really where it becomes key because now you don't have to manage that infrastructure. And you know, to be honest, it, it's been a stumbling block for VDI where you get desktop, um, desktop management guys that are trying to do infrastructure management and it's experience that they don't necessarily have. And, and we've seen a lot of product projects fall over because of that. So to help eliminate some of those stumbling blocks, that might be a reason that drives it. that into your question, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. 
Anyone else? Going one, going twice. <laughs> well, I think that covers it, Chris. I'm not uh, seeing anything else out here. Okay. Thank you. What's the name of the restaurant? Well, I'll keep. Uh, I'll definitely keep on Twitter. So if anybody's got additional questions, they can throw them out there. Uh, they can harass me on Twitter if they want, or you know, just uh, random questions they think uh, think about uh, after the session's over. Do you know? Sure. Uh, and again, Chris's Twitter is at Virtual Boyd. That's B as in Baker, O Y D as in Delta. Uh, Chris, any uh, closing comments or anything else? Uh, the biggest thing I'll say is, is, you know, one of the nice things about doing this is reaching out to customers and partners and seeing how people are going to use it. So kind of to the point that, that the last guy was asking is kind of seeing where it's going. And we're hoping that with the technology, with, you know, other companies kind of getting into it, we'll discover how businesses really want to use this because while the technology itself is, is relatively new, the business cases may have been waiting for this. And, and that's where we've, you know, seen a lot of customers asking for it where it was stuff we never thought of. So, uh, and that's where we learn. As well as uh, as well as you guys, so. but thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, and with that, everyone, uh, we're going to go ahead and close it up again. Uh, next two weeks, uh, April thirtieth and the first Wednesday in May. I'm drawing a blank. What is that like seven? I think. Anyhow, now we're going to have Chris Claudio on talking about VCHS, and then after that, May fourteenth, we're starting the Cisco track. Until then, thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone, and we'll talk to you guys next time.